All right, so this is the third video to uh, help us with section 6.1. We're going to begin with another couple of examples of how to use the table. In the next one, we want the probability that Z will be between 1.12 and 2.31. So as before, good idea to make a picture. So 1.12 is a little over one standard deviation to the right of the mean. And then 2.31 is a little bit further over. So what we want is that strip in between 1.12 and 2.31. Our table tells us areas from negative infinity up to a certain point. And so we'll have to use two separate table lookups to help us get this done. So to see this, let's first draw the area up to 2.31. So up to 2.31 using our table, that's 0.9896. Okay, the area up to 1.12, up to 1.12, that's 0.8686. All right, so the area up to 2.31 is 0.9896. Up to 1.12, it's 0.8686. So the probability that we want, the probability that Z will be between 1.12 and 2.31 will be the difference of these two probabilities, 0.9896 minus 0.8686. And that's about 0.121. Okay, so we have one more example. We want to find the probability that Z will fall between negative 0.53 and positive 0 0.70. All right, so we're going to find first the probability that Z will be less than 0 0.70. So referring back to our table, 0 0.70, 0 0.758. So we found the area up to, from negative infinity up to 0.7. That's everything. We need to cut off though, this little tail to the left of negative 0.53. So let's find the area up to positive 0.53. Why positive 0.53? Because our table just tells us positive Z values. And you'll notice that our whole table, all the Zs are positive. So for 0.53, there's 0.5 and then three, that's 0.7019. Okay, that's the area up to positive 0 0.53, 0 0.7019. So then, of course, we want the complement of that, which is 0.2981. So that means 
the area to the left of negative 0.53 is also 0.2981. Almost done. If we know that the area to the left of 0.70 is 0 0.758, and the area to the left of negative 0.53 is 0 0.2981, then the probability that T would be between negative 0 0.53 and 0 0.70, that would be the difference of those two areas. So negative sorry, positive 0.758 minus the 0 0.2981. 10 minutes, 0 0.4599. Okay, if you made it through that example, okay, you're coming along uh, really well. <laughs> Actually, that was probably the most one of the most complicated kinds that we'll ever see. All right, now we want uh, the probability that Z will be greater than 2.33. So this time we want a right tail. We need greater than 2.33. So looking in our table, the probability that Z will be less than, less than 0.33 referring to our table, 2.3, here's the three column, 2.33.9901. That's the area to the left of 2.33. So then its complement is going to be 0 0.0099. All right, so we've focused on uh, the process of if we are given a Z value, how you find the corresponding area. And now what we're going to do is look at how you t uh, use technology rather than the table. So uh, if you wish to use Excel to do this, the relevant function is called normdist or normal distribution. This one is set up for any normal distribution. So one thing you'll have to put in is the mean, which here I've got a zero and the standard deviation, which is a one. And then um, another parameter you'll need is to put in true to indicate that it's cumulative, that is running from negative infinity up to your particular cutoff. Uh, if you have a TI-83 calculator, the function you're going to want is normal CDF, and that is accessible through the distribution menu, uh, as shown here in the picture. And then uh, if anybody happens to be using R, uh, the function is called PNORM, and then that's for probability, and then norm is for normal distribution. If you wish to use StatCrunch, uh, of course, click on StatCrunch, StatCrunch website, and then you'll need a blank data table, stat, then calculators, and then normal. And then there'll be a menu you use to uh, put in the particular Z that you want. All right, so we're almost there uh, for the day. So this next part, we're going to reverse the procedure that we had um, just a few moments ago. In what we were doing was given a Z value, how do you get a probability? What we're going to do on this slide is the opposite. How do you find the z-score if you know the probability? So remember that the z-scores are along the margin of the table and probabilities are in the body of the table. So let's try an example. So here it says, find the z-score that separates the bottom 90% from the top 10%. Well, the whole data set or what, everything that would be in the sample space is in the whole bell curve. That's the entire 100%. If we want to separate the lower 90% from the upper 10%, then that means we want a probability of 0.90 and we want the Z value that goes with it. 
So search the body of the table and look for something that's close, as close as you can get, 0.9. So the closest thing I can see here is 0.8997. That's the closest uh, value. And the corresponding Z looks like 1.28. So the Z value is 1.28. Again, we're given the probability, which is 0.9, and we wanted to work backwards to get the value for z. We found that our z was 1.28. If you are taking a look at the table and saying, okay, well, there's 0.9, you're doing it wrong. You want to find the 0.9 in the body of the table, because that's the probability, and you want to find the z on the outside of the table. If you can't find the exact value in the body of the table, find the one that's close. If it's right in between two values, uh, you want to choose the higher one. So now we'll find the Z value corresponding to an area of 0 0.92. So 0 0.92. So let's take a look in the body of the table, see if we can find 0.92. So 0.92 looks like it's around here. This one is eight ten thousandths down. This one is seven ten thousandths uh, bigger. So the one that is closer is the 0.9207. That was just slightly closer. Okay. Next, we want to find values separating the middle 95% of the data from the 2.5% in the right tail and the 2.5% in the left tail. So a picture will make that easier to understand. All of the data is 100%. 95% is in the middle. So what's left is 5%. Since the distribution is symmetric, you have 5% divided in two parts, each of which will be 2.5%. So the right tail is 0 0.025 and the left tail is 0 0.025. We want to find the Z values that correspond to those two cutoffs. Our table tells us Z's or areas corresponding to Z's starting at negative infinity. From the left end all the way up, that is 97.5% of the data. The 95% that's in the middle and also the 2.5% that is in the left tail. So when we refer to the table, we're going to need the Z that corresponds to 0.975. So once again, taking a look back at the table, we need 0.975, and that's here, 1.96. So our Zs are plus and minus 1.96. There's going to be a handful of different Z values that occur pretty frequently. And so you'll see those showing the, uh, in the table, uh, table A2 shown here on the screen. For, um, they don't show ours there for this one. Um, for 95% of the data, they didn't include that one. Yeah, this one is not shown. So uh, for 95% of the data in the center, we have 2.5% of the data in either tail. That will leave us with uh, Z values of plus and minus 1.96. Right. Next, um, we want to define the idea of what a critical value is. Um, for the standard normal distribution, a critical value is a Z-score. So first of all, it's a Z value. It's a Z score on the borderline separating Z scores that are significantly low or significantly high. 
and then a little bit of notation. The Z subscript alpha, this is yet another Greek letter. Um, it's the lowercase Greek letter A. This Z alpha denotes the Z score with an area of alpha to its right. For Z.05, if 0 0.05 is to the right, then it must be 0.95 to the left. So looking in the body of the table, 0.95. is right in between 0.9495 and 0.9505. Now you could take the higher of the two, but another thing that's customary to do is to take the average of these. So halfway between 1.64 and 1.65 would be 1.645. So Z.05 is 1.645. And what that means is the Z value that cuts off an area of 0.05 to its right is going to be 1.645. Okay, let's try one more of these. If we want an area of 0 0.025 to the right, then 0.975 is to the left. If 0.975 is to the left, then that's 1.96. So Z.025 is 1.96. That's a Z value that would cut off an area of 0.025 to its right. 